Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Eddie Marcus again. Well, still happening in Washington. The politicians are doing their thing. The media is doing its thing. And the police and the FBI are doing their thing. And we're the people are going through our changes and those who didn't get a check, who are in the soup lines now, are experiencing something they thought they'd never have to experience. At least they gave it their best shot to make sure they did everything they could to avoid it. And having done all of that, they find they are still in the same old boat as those that they were running from. Eddie Marcus, ladies and gentlemen, is my name. And I'm talking to you because, look at me. I am your elder. All of you might be smarter than me, but you're not wiser. And it is because of that that I put myself out here often before you to see if I can help you in any way I can from all that I have been blessed to experience and be able to share with you. Up until this point, it seems as if nobody's entered this, this kind of stuff, and I understand why. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know the thing that going on with Trump and the rest of you and how you can't stand it, the public in general, and those of you who are on social media talking your stuff, and your politicians who are talking your stuff, I want to talk to all of you. There is no one innocent in this debacle. Everyone is guilty. If you think about the Republican Party, I'm talking to the general public now, and the Democratic Party, they are the same party with a different name, swiftening just a little bit, playing a game on you. They themselves don't know precisely that they're playing a game until like they see themselves in the Senate having to do what they are doing to stay afloat because the game that they have been playing is about to be exposed. And so they're riding high because they're not confident that they can stand the whip of this tide. And I can understand why. They are fooled too. One of the most uh, distasteful, sickening things that I witnessed during the presidential campaign of 2016 was the American people having put before them two representatives, each calling the each calling the other evil, and having half of the nation saying the same thing about the other. And the people accepted this evil as a choice, knowing that it didn't matter who they got, they was going to get evil. They just wanted to get what they called the lesser of the two evils, not knowing that with all the power that they gave that lesser, now that evil is the biggest, most powerful evil on the face of the earth. My mind, tell me, He's not smart. That evil is not working alone. Look at us, what we're going through today. Now, what this uh, group, I want to call them that, is doing, it's no different than what was done before. You see, this message that I'm sharing with you now, I got the authority because when I, my hair was black, I traveled this country. I had a message. I had a message from the power, the real power, the real power. I had a message from the power on high. I don't know if it's a man, a woman, or an animal, but I know it's power. Power that has proven itself. And that power gave me an inspiration to do a work. But before I was given to go ahead on, I had to learn. Travel this country on faith. And tell people on the street, tell people in churches, whatever I could, the message. And keep a record of everything that I was doing and how people would respond to certain things that you're doing. Keep it, keep it, keep it, keep it. And I want you to call it American people on the road to hell. I did that, ladies and gentlemen. And I went back and forth months, leaving my family at home. Not knowing how I, was, how I was going to make it from point one to point two, but I knew I was going to make it. And I did. And when I came back, I was sitting down and I was reading in <clears throat> my notes, which are the notes for a book that I put together that I won't sell. I'm just waiting till I'm dead and give it to you. 
It's called The People on the Road to Hell. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Now I had some experience. Not just the word, but experience. I was being taught that those who were in the book didn't walk around with a book unless they were writing in it. And we don't know that. So if that power was strong enough, power, wise enough to be able to communicate to people just like me, hey, 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 then that power could communicate to me. And so I can understand, perhaps, why I was chosen to do that. But before then, ladies and gentlemen, that power came to me in a miraculous way. What would you do if you couldn't see and somebody threw some mud over your eyes and you were able to see what you've never seen before? If you were crippled up and never been able to walk and get around and all of a sudden somebody came back and blew some wind on you and you were able to get around and do like everybody else. What would you say? You could hear other people talking about this power. You could agree if, if it was true. But whatever they said could not be to the magnitude of that which you would say because you are the evidence left behind for the world to see. Stand on the mountain top like a light and shout it out if it's real. And it was real because I came back and I decided to just tell everybody. I wanted to see the world change. That's what had happened to me. I thought about how I could really be effective because effective means that those who were suffering the most would begin to see the joy. They would get engaged and things would start moving in the world that had been so locked up in darkness would begin to see. Oh, that felt real good, real good to me. And so I began to run for public office. I ran for mayor. I ran for governor. I ran for United States senator. I ran for president of the United States several times. Yes, my friend, using that as a platform to be able to say when they were saying what they were saying, when Republicans were saying what they were saying, and Democrats were saying what they were saying, I wanted to say what the power had given me to say. But they were out raising money. And everything you do, you know you need money. Now, the power that I was dealing with, the power that I have come to talk to you about says that peace and prosperity and joy is not founded on that. It's a different plan. And so I had to run as a write-in. Well, you know the story. You never heard of me. Or if you did, you sure didn't vote for me. Is that right? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I remember sitting in the churches 2016 around that election time. Listening to the preachers talk to the congregation. They were saying, well, you know, we got some bad chips up there. But when you look at them, you got to place your vote because they died for us that we could vote. So you got to look at who you think is, would serve you best. Now, they might not all be that, but who would serve you best? Who would serve you best? See, that's a selfish thought there. Who would serve you best? Anyway, that's the attitude on both sides. And so they decided to choose, and they went there, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what I saw? I was, <clears throat> I was seeing how God was testing everybody. He had sent me, got me gray-headed to learn what to back up. And I had come before you and told you about joy, the ones that you were on your knees praying for. Lord, help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. You see, you were expecting God to come and make a miracle for you because the one that's been talking to you about God didn't know what they were talking about. They told you, stand still and watch the glory of the Lord when the devil was getting up getting busy. <laughs> you see, he tricked you, kept you on your knees. And so I come to tell you to get up. You wouldn't listen to that. I came to say, I'll stand with you. Let us stand together. And we do that. The power is with us. We can't be beat. I don't remember going to some of the preacher's houses. And I knocked on the door and just want to spend a few minutes with them, talking with them, sharing with the good news that were motivating me to go around and do what I was doing. And I mentioned it to them. They tell me, oh, well, we're not really interested in the political perspective that you bring. Because we are Democrats or we are Republicans. And we only go that way. We only go that way. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that was genuine. You only go that way. You've heard me say every time that every government on the face of the earth is an anti-God government. It is in operation and resistance to that which give you that which God designed from the beginning, but gave you choice to decide whether you wanted it or not. I 
sat there, my heart crying. I said, Lord, look how, look how they rejected you. See, they didn't, you didn't reject me. You were rejecting the message. And the message was so different. It was so good and wonderful. You couldn't even believe it. You couldn't even see it. Why? Because you never heard it before. <laughs> you never heard it before. They talked about saving your souls. So when you die, you can experience good life. But over here, just don't rock the boat. Sound like the enemy speaking to me. I mean, you couldn't get away with that on the football team. No, no, they throw you out in a minute. Coach better not come there talking that stuff. They know you were working for somebody else. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are, facing all this stuff today. And I'm thinking about the seeds you plant is the fruit you get. You shall reap what you sow. You had been so divided against one another till they were able to put on both sides evil. Nobody could say you were good and wonderful. Both of you had a choice of evil. And you said yes. And now you got ooh-wee. Something that's crazy that will take you under. And I'm listening. You're hoping that somebody will come and rescue you now. You thought Kelly would do it. Oh, Kelly, save us. You thought Mattis would do it. Oh, save us. Now you're thinking Mudden going to do it. Oh, save us. You don't know what these devils have done. They've stacked the Senate. They've stacked the, the House. They've stacked the United States, uh, what they call it, the Justice Department, uh, the, the Supreme Court. They've stacked all of the businesses. They stacked everything. They got the military stack. You know it? They say, when I say jump, you say high. How high? And for those of you who think you can resist, when the moment comes, you going to think you're going to resist, they're going to be on you so hard. <laughs> now just think about, if you, why did you allow yourselves to get in a predicament like this? Why did you Put yourself in such a big hole. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you about the power. The power loves you. Loves you dearly. But the power gave you choice because there is a life of peace and prosperity and joy and where there's no crime, no violence, no lying, no cheating, no stealing. None of that stuff goes on. No. None of that stuff going on. But in order to get there, you have to recognize the principles and you must have chosen those principles and those are the seeds that you plant. And peace and prosperity and joy is the reward, it's the fruit that you get. Doing unto others as you would have them do unto you is a simpler way of saying it. And so by doing it, you're respecting, even though you might not know it, the power because you know you're not the boss anymore. You know what it means to be the boss. Black folks in America, you know white folks have been running everything. You agree with anything they've done? White folks, you guys have been running everything. But you see what Trump done to you now? Do you agree? Everybody's been messed up. Everybody's been messed up. But I'm still here today to tell you that you haven't lost yet. You have not lost yet. But you've got to grow up. You can't grow up trying to outdo them. You can't try, you can't grow up like that. Right now, we say we got a stalemate between the president and the house. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? What do you want them to do? To stand and represent your cause? To stand and represent your cause? Then what makes you different from one another? You're in the same old boat, just like the Republicans and the Democrats always are. But they are in the hands of somebody else. So who is it that's directing them to do the things that they are doing? Doesn't matter, it's being done. But I want to tell you what the good power say you should do. You should do is watch this. The one that is more receptive to the love of God and the one that cares most about you would gladly, right now, would gladly throw in the towel. Let the other one say he got the victory. Throw in that towel. Why? Because you care. You care. There's no greater statement than you care. Oh, of course. When you throw in the towel, the others are going to say, he won. But you see, they don't know what's going on. They don't know the joy that you're feeling because you've got a plan. You're about to do something. You're about to change things by changing who and what you are and about. Oh, this is a magnificent time. Probably couldn't have happened if you hadn't been so asleep. 
but you were, and here we are. So what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, is this. You throw in that towel, and you change by having a clean heart. Not by going to the church listening to anyone. If you go to church, go to church to testify. Listen to one another testify. And really, if it were me, when the testifying is over, I leave. I don't, want to, I, don't hear, I don't need that other stuff. I just want to know what you got to say. I want to know what you say, what's been done to you. And I want to hear you say what you about willing, about really, about really and willing to do. That's what I want to hear. Why? Because now God is glorified. Preaching ain't nothing but trying to glorify the preacher. Get a big church, tithe and offering, play like they work for God, and don't Trump as the president of the United States. That tells you how much work they've been doing, don't it? Now, I'll say that because I'm not in their house, because if I was in their house, I know they, they would slap me for saying the things that I'm saying, but I'm saying it because I'm somewhere away from it. So, here I'm going to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, this, for those of you who haven't heard me before, listen to this. That power that I'm speaking about made the whole earth. You and I, human beings, had nothing to do with it. Now, if there's some other entities out there that was in, in the, under control of that power, I don't know. Don't care. I'm just telling you, we didn't do it. And in the service, everything that appears that humans could ever need, want, or desire to do, the things they think about doing, has been implanted here, somewhere, either in the earth, on the earth, or above the earth. Whether it's seen or unseen, is here. Good God Almighty. Whatever was required of the human being to be able to extract it from that where it hides. That gift has been given to various individuals to perform different and various career. And in so doing that, ladies and gentlemen, they serve purpose. They know who they are, why they are, and they're glad that they're not just here sitting around. They are becoming a part of the creative process. But what do they create? Those things which they need, want, and desire. And anything on the extras is just cream on the top. That's divine. That's divine. That's divine, ladies and gentlemen. And all of a sudden, all of those things, whoo, that you've been doing in your whole life, now you're doing what you want to do, and you're loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. And since you're doing what you're doing, and you're loving it, and you're loving it, your cities, your town, your homes, your houses, your cars, your everything, Woo! It's just polished. Polished with beauty and love. Nobody lying. Nobody trying to cheat you. Nobody trying to trick you. Why? Because everybody's satisfied. Their dreams are being met. Don't let no one tell you that somebody's better than someone else. That they deserve more than somebody else. And you should put up a wall to protect them from coming in. That fool might be trying to lock you in so you can't get out. Hey. You better think twice. Think twice. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what I've said to you is the process. It didn't cost any money, no debts, no loans, no fees, no bankruptcies, no suing. All of that stuff is eliminated because that doesn't happen where love operates. Now, one last thing. You have heard it said that there are so many ways to God. That's how they justify all of the different things that they do. The evidence that it's all crooked is because it ain't doing nothing for everybody else. Not a darn thing is it doing for everybody else. And when you really get down to it, there's only one way. And that way is the way of love. Say it again. The only way to life is traveling on the wave of love. It'll lead you there. Nothing else, my friends. Nothing else. And when you're traveling on the wave of love, your dreams are really real. And though you travel by the valleys of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil because why? You're sailing on the breeze of the wind. I want to thank you so very much once again, ladies and gentlemen, for giving me this your time. It truly has been a pleasure. I mean an absolute pleasure. But it's no good. If it hasn't done nothing. So I'm not saying these things just to you to motivate you. I'm telling you what I have learned that exactly what I've shared with you. Exactly. I have to do the same thing or more. Because if not, who am I to represent the power? Bye-bye.